you have your Bibles this morning, I invite your attention to the book of Exodus, chapter number 14. The book of Exodus, chapter number 14, I'm going to be reading verses 10 through 15, and the title of the message this morning, Going Forward. Exodus chapter 14, beginning in verse number 10. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is, is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. What a statement. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak thou unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Father, we thank you for your word and pray now, Lord, you will bless the message this morning. Use the message to bring glory and honor to your name and to encourage our hearts to continue in the work of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, until he comes. Father, we ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. As we mentioned, Grace Baptist Church has had 61 years of the ministry of the gospel. And I have been privileged to be part of the last six years of those 61 years. And it has been a great privilege. I echo the sentiments of my wife and the words of my, of my wife that we do have a home, a church home. That's important to us. And in those years, there have been great spiritual highs and great spiritual lows. There have been great victories and great defeats. But through it all, the Lord was there to work to guide, to move, to comfort, to strengthen, to move our ministry forward. And we pray we can continue the forward momentum until the Lord comes. Israel had just been delivered by God from the land of Egypt after over 400 years of slavery. God had used the ten plagues to cause the Egyptians to thrust Israel out of Egypt. And the Egyptians said, while you're going, why don't you take our gold and take our silver and take uh, whatever you need, just take whatever you need and leave. The sooner the better. And then God hardened Pharaoh's heart one more time. And the Egyptian army pursued after Israel to bring them back to Egypt. As we go through this message, I want you to be able to understand that in the Bible, Egypt is a picture of this old sinful world. 
the bondage and slavery that the nation of Israel was under in Egypt represents the bondage and the slavery that sin brings to our hearts and lives. And God had led Israel to the shores of the Red Sea. And this was an impossible position for Israel in a military sense. Because the Egyptian army was bearing down upon them, so they couldn't retreat that way. They couldn't go from side to side of the Red Sea because they would be caught. And from a human and military standpoint, the only place they had to go was into the Red Sea. It's the only place they had to retreat. And what do you think would happen to them? They'd probably drown. I tell you, Eisenhower wouldn't have chosen this position for his army to be in. No way in the world. But yet God led Israel to this position. I want you to notice that too. It's God that led Israel here. To what seems to be an impossible position. Church is kind of that way today, isn't it? Many people think we're in an impossible position. No one wants to hear the gospel anymore. Church houses are empty or half empty. People are not as faithful as they used to be. How are we going to continue on until the Lord comes? When no one cares. Seems to be an impossible position, isn't it? But there's one thing I do know. God specializes in impossible positions. And brings deliverance from what we think is impossible. And they were about to experience the nation of Israel, how God would make their escape possible. And to save Israel from the Egyptians. And what God would do in the parting of the Red Sea is a picture of salvation and deliverance. And there are many pictures here of salvation and deliverance which are powerful in their illustration. We see first Moses cried unto the Lord in verse number 15. But yet, we see where there is nothing recorded in the word of God of what Moses said. But when the Lord answered Moses, he said, why criest thou unto me? Now, if Moses didn't say anything, how did he cry unto the Lord? With his heart. Is how he cried. A language that the Lord is very familiar with. For there are many times that we cry unto the Lord and not speak a word. Hannah was that way too. In 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse number 13, you remember that she was barren. And she cried unto the Lord to give her a son, a son that she would lend unto the Lord all the days of his life. And Hannah went to the temple to pray. Now the Bible says her lips moved, but no words came out of her mouth as she cried unto the Lord. The priest Eli thought she was drunk. The 
But after explaining the situation, Eli gave his blessing, and the Lord blessed Hannah and answered her prayer. See, Moses knew that God would deliver them from the Egyptians. You can see that as we read in verse number 13. He told them, fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. Many who are here this morning can give a testimony of their deliverance. Their deliverance from the bondage of their sin. Through the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Through the ministry of the Grace Baptist Church. So Moses knew that God would deliver them from the Egyptians. So he was probably praying from his heart for Israel's lack of faith. As we see there in verse number 10, when they saw the Egyptian army coming, the Bible says they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. It seems that Moses' silent cry was more effective than the fearful cries of the nation of Israel. And of course, who did they blame for the position that they were in? They blamed God through Moses. <laughs> and they complained to Moses. Why have you led us here? Were there not enough graves in Egypt? You know, we're going to die here. The nation of Israel thought they were going to die or go back to Egypt. In fact, they would have preferred to go back to Egypt. Back to their bondage. Back to the world. Back to their sin, rather than to die there. And how many are there today who have given their heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ that have gotten so discouraged and have gotten so frustrated that that's how they feel. I'd rather go back to my sin than to continue to live for God. There have been many. The next thing that we see is God's command in verse number 15. Tell, he said, speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. God said that the people should start forward. And they would see the power of God's deliverance. Forward for the nation of Israel, you understand, was the Red Sea. God told them, I want you to start walking toward the Red Sea. Sounds silly, doesn't it? Two million people were going to swim across the Red Sea? Sounds silly. But you know, they didn't have to swim. As you read on here, here in Exodus chapter 14, you see that God says there to Moses in verse number 16, but lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden Pharaoh's hearts Hearts, harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts and upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. 
Move forward. Go forward, God told them. And then Moses lifted up his rod and he lifted up his arms and God divided the Red Sea. The obstacle that was in their way of escape, God took care of. See, as we move forward, and as we go forward as a church, as we go forward until the Lord comes, there is going to be obstacles that will get in our way. And most of those obstacles will be self-created obstacles. Obstacles of fear. Obstacles of discouragement. Obstacles of our own making. God can overcome those obstacles. There will be the obstacles of those who do not want to hear the word of God or do not want to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord can overcome those obstacles. Because the Lord can get a hold of a person's heart and open their heart and their eyes and their minds to the word of God and the gospel. He's done it before. He can do it again. We just have to believe that he can and that he will. Sometimes that's where we fall flat. There are always obstacles in the ministry. But God can overcome every one. By his powerful hand, he parted the Red Sea and two million Israelites walked on dry ground over that Red Sea. And then after the last one had gotten to safety, and God hardened Pharaoh's heart and the Egyptian army's heart to be able to chase after them, God took those two walls of water that he had divided the Red Sea with and put them back together. And when that happened, the Egyptian army was defeated with their chariots and their horsemen and their power and their glory and everything else. They drowned in the Red Sea. And there are archaeologists that have found chariot wheels in the Red Sea. Proving that this is true. Their choice, the nation of Israel had a choice now. They could have gone back to their past. Back to Egypt back to slavery, back to bondage. Or they could follow the direction of the Lord by faith and move forward. They had that choice. So do we. We have that choice. To live in the past or to move forward to the future. To go back to the past would be to go back to slavery. To go back to suffering and to sin and to bondage. To live in the past is no way to live. But there are those who live in their glory days. Ah, I remember when I was the quarterback of the high school football team. Oh, we were such a great team. Back in 1960. <laughs> Back in 1960-whatever. We were undefeated that year. We won the state championship. 
I played a great season. Over 40 years ago. And people who live in the past, they dwell on the past. They dwell on their past successes and they live in their past glories. But they also dwell on their past failures and live in their past guilt and shame and misery of those failures. Living in the past is no way to live. But they live in the glory days of the great victories and blessings of the past. And also the disappointments and defeats of the past. These folks are prisoners of the past. They're bound by their past. And until they can unbind themselves from their past, they'll never move forward. They'll never go forward. They'll always be in the past. Those who live for the future are not prisoners of their past. They celebrate their victories and their blessings. And they should. They remember their past. But they don't dwell on those victories and blessings. They don't rest on their laurels as people who live in the past do. They feel bad at the disappointments and the defeats, but they don't wallow in the guilt and shame of them. Those who live for the future go and move forward in their life. God had told Israel to go forward. God showed them that their deliverance was to come when God parted the Red Sea through his great power. And as Israel moved forward, God held off the Egyptian army. The Bible says he used the pillar of the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night to be able to be behind the nation of Israel as they crossed the Red Sea on dry ground. It was that pillar of cloud and pillar of fire that kept the armies of the Egyptians at bay until God's people were safe. And then God removed the pillar and hardened the hearts of the Egyptians to chase after them. See, as we move forward, God will be with us. As we move forward, God will watch over us. As we move forward, God will keep us safe. Until he brings us home. To be with him. And just as people live in the past, so do churches. Churches also live in the past. They live off of their heyday and they live off of their great victories and blessings that God had given them way back in 1970, whatever. And they don't move forward. They rest on those laurels. They rest on what God has done in the past. Thank God he has worked here at the Grace Baptist Church in the past. Thank God that some of you are sitting here and have come to know Christ as your personal Savior through the ministry here of the Grace Baptist Church. 
and the rest of us were brought here by God <laughs> to become part of this wonderful body of believers in Christ. But these churches who, generally, generally these churches who live off the victories and live off their heyday, these churches are not growing churches. These churches are declining churches. These churches are older churches in their makeup. These churches are dying churches. Because they're living in the past. Because they're living in the past, they don't pray, they don't visit, they don't do soul winning, they don't have a vision. And the Bible says in Proverbs 29, in the first part of verse 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, churches perish. And there are thousands of churches in America that close their doors every single year. They die. Many of them die because they stayed in the past. Churches that go forward, they celebrate their victories. And they go to achieve more victories. They remember their heyday. And work to achieve a greater heyday. I'm here to tell you this morning, the best days of the Grace Baptist Church are ahead of us. They're not behind us. They're ahead of us. And the best days of the believer of the Lord Jesus Christ is ahead of them. And definitely ahead of them after we leave this world and go home to be with the Lord. Churches with a forward outlook are praying churches. Visiting churches, soul winning churches. They are churches with a vision. Churches that have a purpose of why they're there and what they're to do. Generally, these churches are growing churches. And our church, Grace Baptist, needs to be a church that is going forward until the Lord comes. In spite of the obstacles, in spite of the opposition, in spite of the difficulties, we're to move forward. Have a vision. And move forward with the vision. Until the Lord comes. And there may be one here this morning who has never asked Jesus Christ into their lives as their Savior. And they are in bondage to their sins. And the only way out of this bondage is to go forward. Forward to the cross, forward to the Savior, forward to salvation and eternal life. It's the only way to go, to get out of your bondage of sin. It's to move forward and go forward and trust Christ as your Savior.
leaving their sin behind. And those who have asked Jesus Christ into their hearts and lives as their Savior are not to live in the past. Not to go back to our lives of sin of the past, but to go forward. As I read this morning in Philippians chapter 3 and verses 13 and 14. We must take these verses to heart. To do the thing that the Apostle Paul did. He counted himself not to have apprehended the resurrection of the dead. He had said that he had, was not a perfect or mature Christian as of yet. He said, "Brethren, I count myself to, I count myself to have not to, ha I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do: leaving those things which are behind." going forth unto those, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. There's where we should be, pressing toward the mark, leaving those things which are behind Behind. Reaching forth unto those things that God has before us. And the opportunities that he gives us. Pressing toward the mark. Let us be a church that does that. As we go forward into the 62nd year and beyond until the Lord comes. Let us go to that high calling of God in Christ Jesus to, go, to grow, to serve, and to be all the Lord wants us to be. And there may be some things in your life, believer, that you need to let God take away from your life an obstacle that's in your way. It could be fear. It could be a lack of faith. It could be many different things. We have an invitation to give you the opportunity to come and do business with God. And pray and ask the Lord to remove the obstacles that keep me from being all that you want me to be. As we stand for our invitation, I appreciate your time and attention this morning. As the Lord speaks to your heart this morning, you come.